What's up, buddies? I'm eBike Builder, and today we're going to take a look at CYC. So I've been following CYC for a while now. It's a company that makes e-bike, like do-it-yourself e-bike motor kits. All right, so e-bike conversion kits. So they've got, and it's more focused towards e-mountain bike. I guess they have e-dirt bike and stuff now too, it looks like, on their website. I'm looking at their website here. So they sell these kits. Um, so the kit comes with the motor. The controller is inside of the motor. Um, or it's attached to the motor. Right, so they've got different motors. They've got a photon. They've got, so now they sell batteries. So they've, they're trying to do like a whole kind of like integrated system. The kit, battery, everything. It's kind of like a bring your own bike deal. Right, they don't sell full e-bikes, I don't think. So let's let's go take just a quick look at their kits. So there's the X1 Pro Gen 4, the big guy, and there's the X1 Stealth Gen 3, and then there's the Photon. So and you can all well, you can look at all these specs. So the Gen this X1 Pro Gen 4, this is kind of like an off-road. I think the X1, those are more of kind of like off-road motors especially that Gen 4, but then the Proton, I believe that this is a 750 watt motor um, that should be considered legal, I would imagine, in many areas. So these are the kits that they have, right? And so one of the reasons that I, so I've been tempted many times, like I've, I've been so close, like I've had it in my shopping cart and my finger was like almost clicking the mouse but I didn't do it and the reason that I never do it is because I always go out on the internet searching for reviews right searching for you know some good videos some good content about these motors and each time in the past when I went looking for videos and looking for content there first of all there wasn't a whole lot of it right so that's kind of a red flag right when there's just not a lot of content on something um, it's, it must not be very popular, right? Like there's not a whole lot of people, as far as I can tell, there's not a whole lot of people using these motors, right? So there's just not a lot of content. Now I haven't looked for a while, but that's how it was in the past, right? And then, so the other thing is the content that CYC puts out, it's kind of like, it's kind of just like markety, you know, show off kind of, it's, it's. CYC, like, they, they very much, like, they want to put out, like, snazzy marketing materials and just look really cool and show it off and get people all hyped up just so they buy it, right? Like, impulse purchase kind of thing, right? But the thing is, is, like, you, in this day and age, like, you need a little bit more than that. Like, people aren't going to go out impulse purchasing, you know, $1,200 motors and $800 batteries. You know, maybe some people will, but, like, CYC, they, they, their marketing sucks. It's all just kind of like selfish, show off, you know, look at us, we're cool. And then like, you know, they, they just want impulse buyers, right? Is what they want. And so every time in the past, when I go and look, like I go on, I go on YouTube and I'm looking for like, let's, let's go on YouTube and I'll search for CYC Pro, CYC X1 Pro Gen 4. Okay. So here's my search. Here's my search for the CYC X1 Pro Gen 4. Okay, so there's a, the first thing that comes up is a video that is less than one minute long from CYC, this marketing, so this is the announcement, right? So then now they have another video, right? And they're showing, so they actually did a video here where they show the noise and they compare it and stuff and so I think I watched this I did watch this video at some point but it didn't leave too much of an impression or it didn't leave too much of an impression on me like I guess they tested against the Suron in this video let's see Today I'll be explaining the bike we use for the promotional video for the X1 Pro Gen 
cool. The battery is a 14H2P battery. It's that. So. So it looks like they use pretty small batteries. So 14S2P. That's a way of saying it's 52 volts. And it doesn't have much cells in it. It doesn't have many cells in it. So I would expect the capacity of this battery that they're using right there. I'm kind of curious. It's probably like 8 amp hours or something. Or like 10 amp hours. Like what? Let's see here. So the AC, the AC series batteries. So when you're doing mountain biking, you don't want, you might not need a 20 amp hour battery that weighs like 15 pounds, it's just not ideal. So it does make sense to have lighter batteries when you're mountain biking, but so let's take a look at this battery. So at least there, it's got, you know, it, it, look, it does look like a high quality battery, right? So nice case, good Samsung cells. It looks like it's got a good system for mounting onto the bike. So, like, I like what they're doing, right? So, they've got a charge port, high discharge BMS. So, I like what they're doing, but, like, where where are the specs? Like, what, what are the specs for? It's like they don't, oh, way down at the bottom. So, yeah. So, 10 amp hours. So, that's it. 52 volt, 14 S2P, 10 amp hours. So they got Samsung 50S cells in it. So they're nice batteries, but they're very small batteries. They don't have a whole lot of capacity. They've got one here, or it's it's 14S 3P. So that's 15 amp hours. That's more like it. But. So I mean, let's let's look at this video. And let's see, like, my, like, I, <laughs> I, I, I know that I've watched it in the past, but I, like, I wasn't impressed. So let's. Full of 60 amps continuous and 80 amps peak. So at the moment, the motor is set to a peak of uh, 4 kilowatts. And in order to drive the 4 kilowatts through the bike, we have uh, a special cassette we made specifically for the S1 Pro. So the reason for this setup, what we found with standard cassettes is if you use the full power of the bike in the top two cassettes because of a bad chain line and the size of the gear itself, in some cases it's possible to fold the largest and second largest cog on a normal mountain bike cassette because it's... Yeah, that's what I found too on my BBS HD is that thing will just break cassettes, especially the big ones. So... I don't even remember this. So let's watch this again. Thing we notice is by removing the bottom two and only using as small as a 15 for the lower cog, we get enough chain wrap so there's enough tooth contact for the chain to not skip or jump out once there's a bit of tension released. So this also gives a better cassette longevity, but this principle can also be followed on standard cassettes by not using the highest two in the highest power and as well as the lowest two to prevent slipping or folding of cassette gears. But if you stay within the middle range and keep a good chain line, generally the result is quite good for most cassettes. See, the thing about using a bike drivetrain with a mid-drive motor, especially one that's doing 4 kilowatts, is like, you don't even need a cassette. Like, you don't need a bunch of gears, or at least with the BBS HD. Like, you can just gear it really low, and you don't need a bunch of gears when you're on higher voltage. Uh, like, I, I got old. I got, I got sick of all the shifting on my bbs hd and it's like if i can accelerate fast and then get up to sp the speeds that i need without having a derailleur or, or gears or anything or a shifter then my opinion is just like for my bike i just went single speed with my bbs hd on high voltage right but so it's like it's what I'm saying is like it's kind of hard to have a bike set up for pedaling with a whole bunch of gears and like a cassette and everything, and then to also have it work with a motor doing a lot of power without breaking anything on your bike. And the thing is, is like even if you get it working, like even if you get a bike set up like this and it works great and you're not breaking anything, like when you're using the motor, like you're not really gonna be pedaling, right? Like when there's 4,000 watts going through the drivetrain. You're, you're pedaling 100 watts or 200 watts, like it's just, 
you can't even like you can't even like perceive that it's helping right <laughs> it's just like pointless so if you're doing 4,000 watts like you might as well not be pedaling right like and sometimes it's like I wish I just had pegs on my e-bike instead of pedals because you have to be conscious of like where the pedals are and stuff when you're when you're cornering and leaning the bike and you got to watch out for pedal strikes so it's almost like pedals can get in the way right so let's keep let's keep watching this I mean, it looks cool. Like, I like what they're doing, right? I like what they're doing. Case that pretty hard. So what we have here is as close as possible to a stock Suron. So they're going to compare it to a... They're going to compare it to a Suron. Suron uses 350 phase amps. That's crazy. ...to remove the controller and replace it with an EVMX controller. But it's set to the stock setting of 6 kilowatts and 300 phase amps with a 60 volt battery then uh, what we have here is one of our things how does that make sense I, I just I don't understand this like how, how this could happen what bikes are they riding here so so that's a Suron 6 kilowatt 350 amps phase and then they have the X1 Pro Gen 4 52 volt bike I don't understand how this is possible. Like the Suron will blow this thing away on 52 volts with that little, you know, 2P battery. The Suron's got a 60 volt battery that is like way bigger. Those Suron batteries are huge. So like higher voltage, less voltage drop, more capacity. I don't understand. Like, what is this? What happened here? What are they showing us? Look at this battery. Suron. This is the slowest Suron that I've ever seen in my life. Then, like, look at this. Uh, what we have here is one of our test bikes that we've mounted a 72 volt battery. It's 28.4p. Oh, okay. So now they've got a test bike with a 72 volt battery so no, let's not get confused here they did a little switcheroo now we're able to draw about eight kilowatts out of it for testing but it's still set to the stock uh, settings that we sell the motor with at the moment um so we use these two bikes as a comparison between uh stock Saron and uh, x1 pro gen 4. Is this like the CYC headquarters in the woods, or what is this? This is the slowest Suron I've ever seen. Like, what are they doing? That was weak. I'm just not satisfied with this video, guys. Let me know in the comments. Are you satisfied with the CYC marketing stuff? Like, look at this. Okay, so this is like, I'm getting sidetracked here. This is what I want to talk about. Is they sent me, so this is CYC. This is why I don't like them. Is they make all these shitty videos where they don't actually, like, it's just bullshit. Like, they're, that was the slowest surround I've ever seen. Like, are surrounds that slow? Like, it just seemed slow. And it seemed like the guy in the surround was a pussy. So they sent me this email today. This is what I want to talk about. So they made a new video. So this is CYC's idea of how are we going to get people to buy our motor? What kind of content we can we put out there to make people get excited about our stuff? So they're doing a dream builds 
series, I guess. So I got that email. I'm going to take a look at it. It's a video on YouTube, right? So let's go take a look at it. So right here, here it is. Oh, it's Kathy. Kathy's narrating it. I love Kathy's voice. It always soothes my soul. I need Kathy to read me bedtime stories or something. That would improve my life. She could be in that Calm app. You guys, you guys have that Calm app where it like plays those soothing sounds and you fall asleep? Kathy's voice should be in the Calm app. Covering aspects of the bike itself, along with the conversion kit used, but also share the component list for your reference, as well as the broadcast at the end. So stay tuned. Our first video in the series is fitting the first. I'm gonna leave the, the I'm gonna leave the captions on. I don't know if you guys can hear this. The Scott Spark is a celebrated cross-country frame with a single pivot rear suspension design, 29 inch with 120 mil front and rear suspension. For converting it to an e-bike, the steep down tube allows you to tilt the motor upwards, making minimal impact on the ground clearance. So, I did watch this video already, and I have some thoughts about it. But so, I like this part, where they're saying, here's the bike that we picked, here's why we chose this bike, right? Here, so this design of this bike frame, the steep down tube, allows us to pull the motor up, and it doesn't affect the ground clearance very much. So I like that aspect of the video where they're showing you the bike and they're explaining this is why we chose this bike and this is why this is a good bike to use. If making a sleek, clean e-bike is also your thing, then the internal routing will certainly appeal to you. Now this is the part of the video where they're kind of like going off the rails a little bit to me. It's like they go into depth on like this specific bike and like you know the internal routing and like how like we can go through it here but it's just like we got to focus on the motor we got to focus on the kit we got to focus on cyc right like show us the bike but this is the cyc motor like it just felt like this whole video i was just like learning about this bike and it wasn't so much about the motor it was just like oh god look cool look at this cool bike we made guys oh this is awesome and it's, it's kind of another one of those marketing things where it's just like, it's like selfish content, right? It's like they, they do something kind of like for themselves, right? Like build a bike or whatever, new prototype. They make this selfish content where it's just kind of like they, they just want to like give a certain impression, right? And they just want like those like people to get all hyped and just like impulse buy it. But then in this video, it's like, they go and they talk about this internal routing for like half the video. So all aspects considered, you really can't go wrong choosing a Scott Spark for So there's all the pieces. A little bit there's there's a few more pieces than the BBS HD kit, I would I would say. Just a few. Still kinda close. I like how they have a an X T ninety anti spark. On their little battery battery cradle there, that's nice. That's the first time I've really seen that on like a e-bike kit. Have it come with the XT90 anti spark. So I appreciate that their batteries and their electrical stuff, you know, seems pretty solid. The headset on the Scott Spark. So this is the part of the video where I don't even understand why this is in the video. Like, I. Personally, I don't want internal routing. It just seems like a nightmare. Like, look at this. So it's like, I don't want to take the, I don't want to take the stem off my bike just to put an e-bike display on it. Like, part of the unique design. Not only did they design the frame to have internal routing, like most modern frames, but they also designed it so that the routing goes through the. See, I don't know. I don't understand why. Like this is just kind of making it seem like complicated. Like it's it's cool to show like how you did it, and like I like uh, it's it's interesting to see this. But the question that I want to pose is like, do people, do potential customers for a CYC conversion kit, 
need to be seeing this as part of the dream build like this isn't part of my dreams right like i don't want to mess with internal routing like i'm not interested in that and this video i mean it it, it just like gets stuck on it for like a whole man it must have been like a fourth of the video so let's keep going how long do they spend on this internal routing so it starts like right here, 115. Instead of the top tube. This adds an extra layer of protection from the cables getting snagged, but it also helps keep the bike. Escaping. It's just kind of intimidating. It's like, it's like this, they're showing you like this surgical procedure. Like they gotta make it seem simple and easy, right? Like slap that thing on a bike real quick. I, I think, see, like they're, they're just always trying to show off. Right? And like they won't just show you how loud the motor is. They finally, finally, the first time that they ever showed how loud the motor was, was this video that we just watched right here. That was the first time that they ever showed a video of somebody just riding the bike with the sound. Like previously, they would always have some like music or it was like some, you know, like some marketing hype thing. But that, that was the first time they ever showed the, the sound of the motor. And people, like, that's the Gen 4. That's the fourth, like, they've made four generations of this thing. And their marketing team just now, just now decided, fine, we'll show them how this thing sounds. So, I mean, like, to that, to me, like, I wish they would just, like, give, like, you know, give a kit to somebody and let them review it and make content with it. Right, but it doesn't seem like they do that. This is particularly true for e bike builds where you have extra peripheral. So here we go. Right, we're still, you know, we've been 30 seconds later, we're still doing this internal routing. To get the CYC wiring harness and peripheral cables routed through the frame, nobody wants to do this. Like, I don't want to do that. This kit includes a variety of wire cables that have a metal end cap attached to them, allowing We're us still to gone. route it through with a magnet. Oh my god. To continue with the sleek profile of this build, we use... Okay, so it was like, what, 45 seconds? Where they got stuck on the internal routing? It's just like a feature of the bike that doesn't have anything to do with CYC. I mean, I know it is like a dream build episode but i mean i just felt like it's just like minimalist style cyc sw102 display leave a comment so what do you guys think no about this video what do you guys think about cyc's marketing style when connecting the display and other peripherals there are arrows on both the male and female side to help you line up the pins properly we also decided Male and female side. See, look at this. Every e bike has this. Like, this is nothing new, right? These little, like, green waterproof connectors. Like, there's nothing new about that. You don't, everybody has this that has an e bike. Like, it's just standard. So, we don't even need to mention it. Like, if it's just an industry standard, like, there's no, like, it doesn't matter, right? Like, it's just an expectation, right? You don't even need to mention these. To help you line up the pins properly. Oh, okay. Oh, like. We also decided to use the one-to-one -one wiring harness. Guys, I just woke up. So when I wake up, I'm kind of in like a razzle-dazzle state of mind. This setup has no throttle. It ties into this build and matches the configuration of most premium integrated manufactured e-mountain bikes on the market. In general, zip ties are used to manipulate the cables into the desired position. But here we were able to use the cable wrap that came with the bike. Specced for long rides, we went with the A52 bandy. With a steep down tube and ample space in the triangle, we had the choice of installing the battery below the down tube as well. Since the water bottle cage mounts were already on the frame, we decided to mount the battery inside the triangle instead. These battery cases in this battery mount system actually kind of interests me more than like the motor because it's it's kind of interesting i wonder what the inside of those batteries look like like i wish i just had the like a battery 
without the cells or something. So I could put my own cells in there because I like how it mounts on there and I like how it looks. And it's like this nice aluminum case and it looks like it mounts on there good. Right? So I think they got something going here with the batteries and like the mounting and just like how they're doing the batteries. The I like battery that. Pack is designed to mount onto the water bottle cage mounts. The battery's mount has holes slotted specifically for this reason. We also use Loctite to secure the bolts since you don't want anything getting loose from the vibrations while riding. The A52 is a 520 watt hour pack which weighs in at 3.7 kilograms or 8 pounds, making it the heaviest part of the e-bike components. Our inspiration for this bulb was to create a premium factory built comparable e-bike so the photon motor was the ideal choice here. The motor system itself weighs only 3.5 kilograms or 7.7 .7 pounds, making the total weight added to the spark 7.2 kilograms or 15.8 pounds. It's a BB92 bottom bracket on the frame, so we had to use the press switch bottom bracket removal tools to get the job done. Yeah, so you're gonna need like a whole bike shop worth of tools to get this thing in there. On this bike. The BB92 to BSA adapter cups that came with the kit and slotted in the photon from the drive side. We use the spindle to align the threads on the left BB cup, which significantly reduces your risk of cross threading. Or cross. It's also very good to use an aluminum. It seems like they maybe should have edited that part out. Let's see if we can help. Let's see if we can help Kathy. Okay, see how I see. So you can do a little cut here from 409. To 412. Cut out 409 to 412 because Kathy is like coughing. To use an aluminium or copper based anti seize piece on the bottom bracket cup to prevent galvanization. The Spark is a cross country focused bike, which generally has a higher average speed than other technical or enduro focused frames. So we went with the 38 teeth option, allowing you to maintain a more comfortable cadence. We had to modify the rear suspension cover to ensure that the motor cables can sit flush against the frame and provide access to the internally routed cables. We finished off the bike by changing the grips to match the wicked wool tires and gave everything a good clean. The bike that was used was a 2023 model Scott Spark. And we were able to get the bike at a special price of $2,200. The motor system used was the CYC Photon with a default firmware rated X. I like how they're, I like how they're given the build cost. I don't know. We're gonna have to see how much it costs here. I didn't watch it this far yet. I didn't watch this whole thing. But it seems like it's gonna be like fairly expensive. Like I could have built two high voltage BBSHDs on junkie bikes for the cost that they built this thing. 150 watts. It also had the 38T chainring option and the SW102 display. This came in at $950. The battery pack they used was the A52 version. So, so the motor kit for the CIC Photon, so that's a 750 watt mid drive, is $950. You can get a Bafang BBS02 750 watt mid drive f for what? $400 or something? I mean, $350 when there's a big sale on AliExpress. So, I mean, the Photon costs at least twice as much as the BBS02. Now, there are things about the Photon that are better than the BBS02, right? Like the Q factor of the cranks, right? Like there's things about the Photon that you could argue are better than the BBS02 in some way. Let's keep going though. I mean, it's just the motor kit, it seems expensive for what you're getting and the torque, it was less than the BBS02. It said it was 110 Newton meters of torque on this thing and the BBS02 is like 120, so. At around $490. If we wanted to get a bit of extra capacity out, so, so that A series battery was five hundred dollars, and that was that was a fifty-two volt fourteen S 
2P battery. So there's 28 battery cells in the battery. There's 28 battery cells in that thing. All right, so it, it seems like the battery's expensive. I mean, there are things that are nice about it, like the construction is nice, the build quality and all that, but like, and, and the cells are Samsung, but I mean, that price is crazy. Because if it's 14S 2P, I mean, there's 14 times 2 cells in it, so 28 cells. And if you go look up Samsung, what are they, 50E or whatever they were, if Samsung whatever cells, t look at the price of one of them, probably like $5. Multiply that by 28, and that's how much the battery cells cost. Right, so then you, there's other stuff in the battery that costs money. Right, BMS, it's the case. Right, and like the, the the battery case is made out of aluminum, and it's got that mounting thing, and there's some wiring and stuff. The XT90 anti spark connector itself, you know, like they're like five ten dollars a piece, but it still seems like it seems like the battery's nice, but it's just like for what you're getting, in terms of the battery cells, and how much they they want for it, like it's expensive for what you're getting. So it looks like they'll the 2P battery, so the 10 amp hours, is 490. But then they'll give you a 3P battery, or 15 amp hours, for $640. Well, that's still nuts, guys. Like, that's expensive for a 15 amp hour battery. Estimation labor was 350. And then... Three hundred and fifty dollars for installation labor. Yeah, I bet that probably took a while. So what is that, like six hours or something? I wonder how they come up with that. The bike components, like the grips, came in at a total of twenty five dollars. This made the total price of the bike four thousand and fifteen dollars. The other components on the bike include the Schwabi wicked wheel tires, twenty nine front and rear. We also used the 12 speed Shimano Dior, which came with the bike. The brakes and the calipers were also Shimano, and we used the RockShox GD Silver 320 mm travel for the support. The rear shock was in the X Fusion Mood 5. Well, guys, that's it for our first video in the Stream Build series where we used the Photon and the A52 battery pack. Thank you guys. Wanna so. Find out any more of the specs of the motor system or the battery packs used. Please feel free to visit our website at www.sifthebattery.com. Alright, so it's a cool... I don't know, I guess that's it. We washed it. So it's a cool looking bike. But it's like, it's just like, does this get you excited to buy a CYC Photon? I don't know. I mean, I'm just kind of left a little bit disappointed. Like, I just listened to internal... about. I just listened to like internal routing I'm like oh look at our bike it's so cool and it's like I don't feel any more tempted to buy the photon and then the thing is is like they built this whole bike and then they don't even show you the bike in action they don't even ride it they don't show it going like <laughs> that's the whole point of a motor conversion kit is you put a motor on a bike and then it's an e-bike so like show us the e-bike show us the final result what are they doing like who is doing the marketing at CYC? I'm not trying to be negative. I'm not trying to offend anybody. But it's just like, what is going on? Like, I can't... Let me know in the comments. Like, does this make you feel like you want to buy one of these things? It's just like... It's just like, oh, look at our bike. It's all cool and expensive. And we put a motor on it, but then we're not even going to, like, show you... We're not even going to show it to you. Like, in action. So, I mean, this is why CYC, they've only got 5,000 subscribers on their YouTube channel. This is why when you go search for CYC X1 Pro Gen 4, there's just, like, nothing, right? There's just nothing. Like, okay, so Johnny Nerdoat finally made... Johnny Nerdoat did one, but, I mean... 
I, I'm I'm still not tempted. I don't know. I did watch I watched this video, but I like I don't even remember what happened. It's just every time I watch one of these, I'm just kind of like disappointed. So is there like is there I, I, like there's just so few videos of people actually riding this thing so here here's a video so he's on 48 volts let's go look at this so this is a pro one gen 4 so Today this is testing the gen 7 0311 t iron we've set up the robot listen to how noisy that thing is So this video is from Venture Imagery. He's only got 70 subscribers, so make sure you go subscribe. Okay, so we're on 48 volts. Okay. Looks like we're going down a hill. Going pretty fast. So I wonder, I wonder about like the temperature of that thing, because to be able to hold 40 miles an hour on this thing, I would imagine it's probably using quite a bit of power. I can't see on the, this, on this app. That's another thing about the CYC is it seems like you use your phone as the display. and. After using the flip ski for a while, like I just I don't want to have to use my phone for the display. Like it's cool when you have a phone app that can connect to your e-bike and that's an option. But I like when your phone goes dead, then it's like, what's going on with my e-bike? So there's still a lot of value in having an actual display on your e-bike. This is some crazy sidewalk action here. You should have just stayed in the road. Right on the sidewalk like that is just a little sketchy because it's so bumpy and then people can just come popping out of nowhere, kind of blind spots. So, I mean, it's impressive, but it seems really noisy. So, is he shifting? I don't, like, has he shifted at all? I can't really tell. But this is what we need more of. Like, we need more of videos like this, where it's CYC motor on a bike and somebody's actually riding it, right? Like, and this is from, this is 12 days ago. So it's like, like, I've been searching for years for these motors and like just now, people are starting to post videos like this. So it's like, I don't know if, if they're like slowly becoming more popular, you know, or what, but it's like, is this the first guy that's ever bought the kit? Like, what's going on? Where are all the videos, you know? CYC, they just need to come out and they just need to say, here's our fucking motor. It's loud as hell. We don't care. We don't give a fuck. Here's, watch this. And then just go flying off a jump or something. You know, it's like, we know it's loud. We don't care because it's awesome, right? Like, that's what you need to do. Like, not, like, hiding, like, beating around the bush and, like, hiding and, like, marketing, fake marketing hype videos and, like, trying not to let people hear how loud the motor is. It's just, like, just get out and rip it. Who cares? Like... This is like the first good video I've ever seen on a CYC where the motor didn't fucking burn up in the first ride. I 
I wish you could see more on the display though. It, like it doesn't seem like it. Sh Does it show you the power? Wait. I'm impressed that it can get going that fast on 48 volts, but I just wonder like how many watts was that taken? Okay, here, acceleration, let's see. So I just wonder what what gear is he in here? And look at the voltage. It says the voltage is dropping to 41. So I mean the that's like that's like almost the cutoff point of a 52 volt battery, 41 volts. So that's what happens when you have two cells in parallel or three cells in parallel is when you're when you're doing when you're discharging a lot, you know, thousands of watts then the battery voltage is like sagging down to dead levels. Look at this, 40 point, yeah. See this, this is what, this is what you shouldn't be doing. I don't know, like people that, like this just doesn't, it's not a good look for e-bikes. Like the street and the sidewalk, it's not, it's like, it's not your stunt course, you know. The reason I say that is it's sketchy enough riding an e-bike in the streets, just trying to like ride your bike down the street and go from point A to point B. So anytime you're like weaving on and off the street into the sidewalk and like going off of jumps and stuff, it just seems questionable to me. It's not like a great look for e-bikes. I'm impressed that it can go so fast when it's only on... 40 volts like it's taken down to like 41 volts right here he must have it in a pretty high gear but i mean look how useless this phone app is like it just shows your speed you can barely see the voltage i can't i can't even see it doesn't even it doesn't even look like the watts are reading in the app correctly which is like what's going on with that This guy lives in kind of a cool area. So it's interesting how, why is the motor power now is that human power? What? This app sucks, boys. I don't know. This video is getting long. So this is this is probably the coolest video I've seen on the X1 Pro Gen 4. Um, and I imagine... I imagine this is going to be a pretty popular video because it's like nobody posts videos like this on their CYCs. It seems like the motor just burns up. So let's go search for CYC X1 Bacon Buddies. <laughs> is that what it is? So there's this guy and he, he got... This guy. Bacon Buddies. It's such a hard channel to find.
so Bank and Buddies, he did like a whole series on his CYC X1 Pro. But, and you can see I've watched all these videos, but something happened with it and he like burnt it up. And I think it was like one of the first rides after he put it back together. So he's got a whole video on like how he burnt up this motor. No matter who you are, there are times it can be tough to be yourself when you have severe asthma. <laughs> Alright, so I I enjoy Bacon Buddies uh, videos, so he's got an example here of how his excellent burned out. Yeah, so that's the the magnet came loose noise is what that is, I believe. But yeah, so he he bought the CYC X1 Pro Gen 3. So this is a Gen 3, right? This is less than a year ago. So it's the previous generation of the motor. So this is the other thing. I didn't talk about this at all. But the another big thing with CYC is they keep coming out with these new versions of the motor, Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3, right? But the problem is, is like each time they come out with this new generation, they completely abandon the other generation, right? And so like if something changed, if there's new chain ring parts or there's like something new about this new motor or something different about the old generation, like what happens if you've got a Gen 2 and then three, three generations down the line, you're, you know, a couple years down the line for CYC, you have a problem with your Gen 2 and you need a Gen 2 part, right? So it becomes difficult when each generation they're changing things and coming out with new motors and they're just like, they're always kind of moving forward and they're not really focused on like helping out people, right? That are on previous generations with old versions of the motor. It's almost kind of like they're having their customers pay to test their products. And then, so they, they, they sell these motors and the people pay and they test them. Right, and then CYC just kind of like keeps moving forward and making it better, but it's like they're not, I, I get the feeling that it's like if after a few years and there's more and more generations come out, if you're using one of these older gen motors, like you might run into issues with CYC being able to get you the parts and stuff that you need. And then the other concern that I have about CYC just in general is that they're, they're not very they don't really support right to repair they don't want people opening their motors and doing repairs on their own right if something goes wrong with your cyc they want you to ship it back to them all the way over in taiwan right so think about that think about how much shipping to taiwan costs think about how long does that take just to ship it one way you know potentially week two weeks right and then cyc they have to process that RMA, sit down, have somebody take work on it, right? Sort it out. And then you got to ship it again, right? So how much does that cost for them to fix it? How much does it cost to ship a motor to Taiwan to, you know, there and back? How much do those parts cost that only CYC produces? I don't know. So these are some of the reasons why I haven't bought a CYC yet. And I don't think I'm going to buy one anytime soon. I did see that they have a partnership with EBC now, electric bike company in the US. So that's exciting. Hopefully that partnership with with uh, EBC allows CYC to grow a little bit and mature a little bit as a platform. But until then, right, until they've matured as a platform and things seem a little bit more stable, right, and until CYC figures out how to do marketing, Right, and just do a video, and then, like, so they built this whole bike, and then they didn't even show us the bike in action. Like, <laughs> it's just like it's too much for me. So, see what I see? Like, you got to work on the marketing, right? Like, you got to work on the marketing. I don't care about the internal routing, like, I don't care about all this stuff. 
right? It's a cool bike, but like you got, you can't build the bike and then not show it. Like what is going on? So like and subscribe, leave a comment. What do you think? Would you buy a CYC motor? I get a lot of comments all the time telling people to, or I get comments all the time where people are asking me about CYC and asking me if I've tried one out and suggesting to me that I should try one. But I think in this video, I've kind of explained why I haven't tried one yet, right? And so leave a comment. Let me know. Have you, do you have a CYC? Do you have some good videos of a CYC? Um, have you had one in the past? What was your experience with the CYC conversion kits? Um, but yeah, I just thought I would do this because people ask me about CYC all the time. This is what I think about them, right? It's, they seem cool, but it just seems risky, right? It seems risky to me. I'm not going to risk thousands of dollars on a product that's just kind of like still in testing, you know, where you, you can't even buy the parts to repair it on your own. You've got to ship it back to Taiwan and the company doesn't support right to repair and in the past, their marketing has just been kind of like deceptive and misleading. So that's my opinion. Like and subscribe. Leave a comment about CYC. And hey, if CYC wants somebody to make some real videos, right, with their CYC. Now, I don't want the photon, right? I don't want the photon. I'm not interested in that. If CYC wants to, if CYC wants somebody to do some proper videos of the Gen 4, I know a guy. All right? I know a guy that would do it, that would sit around and make these videos for months on end of a Gen 4, but I'm not, he's not paying for it, right? So like and subscribe, CYC, send me a motor, and I'll do it. I'll make the videos, all right? But till then, I'm not buying it. Peace out, bubbies. Later.